Well, hello! Today I'd like to welcome you to my first impressions of a Pevdi fountain pen. This is a Hungarian brand. and Honestly, I don't know much about it, but judging by the box and a few other things, my guess is this is a pen of the 60s, 70s? I don't know. But anyway, let's take a look at it. So, it arrived in this box, vintage box. I will admit, although this is a first impression, I have taken the pen out of the box for cleaning purposes because I didn't want any nasties getting into my ink. So it just slides open like that. And it rests in a nice, simple cardboard doohickey. The pen itself Does that look familiar? Does that look familiar? How about now? Yeah, uh, this is a clone of the Parker 45. Uh, I have a video upcoming. I've got a couple other clones of the Parker 45 that I would like videos of. Uh, so I won't talk any more about the similarities, but I think you'll see them if you know the Parker 45. And for your reference, I'll put a, I'll try to remember to put a link to the Parker 45 in the video description. But I filmed so many flipping videos this weekend, I probably gonna lose track. Maybe I'll remember when I edit the footage together. So on the outside, plain gray pen, very simple finial. Oh, so I was about to compare it to the Parker 45, but it's the Parker 45, it's like that too. Uh, yes, basically a Parker clip, but remember this is a Hungarian pen. Slip cap, ooh, like the Parker 45. And we're left with a nib, which Looks very Parker 45 like. I don't know about you. Let's see if it unscrews. It does! Like a Parker 45! A little bit of. Oh, I can tell that my cleaning job. I cleaned a lot of ink out of this. I can tell my cleaning job wasn't as amazing as I thought it was. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, I can also see that this is a fine nib. I'm, well, okay, I'll save it for the video. Um, I'm kind of curious if I can exchange nibs now, though. Unscrew it. Okay, that says Parker. Made in the USA. So, either Pevdi bought a bunch of these, or this is a good fake. Yep, this is an old style Aerometric converter. It works. At, le at least it draws water. We'll find out, I guess, if it draws ink. So, on that note, what would be a good ink? Well, I think a darker pen like this deserves a darker ink, so we'll go with Califolio Equinox. I have a weird on my computer screen that popped up in the midst of recording this. Okay. Anyway. Oops, that was totally off screen. Takes a little time for the rubber to expand. What is it? The 51 says to do that four times, so think that's what I've just done. I don't have a model for this, so we're just going to go with Pevdi. It does post quite deeply. Alright, slightly hard start, but, you know, that's the first I've ever written with this pen, and who knows how long this pen is just set around, abandoned in some drawer in Hungary. So the ink is Califolio. Come on. Califolio Equinox 5. I probably butchered that, so I apologize. Uh, the ink in it, or I'm sorry, as far as flex. No. <laughs> I didn't think there would be any. Oh, I should put that it's a fine point. 
because uh, it says it is. Not bad, it's just definitely not a flex writer, but it does remind me of the Parker 45 because that's about how that writes also. Uh, as far as wetness and flow. Didn't seem to have any trouble keeping up there. Smear test. I think as long as you're not looking for, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. I think it's doing okay, but it's not, yeah, not super wet. Uh, and reverse writing. If you're into that kind of thing. You know, this feels just as smooth as the regular writing. And finally... The world famous Pierre Gustafson test. You know, I had a brief moment where it failed in the middle there, but it might have been because I accidentally rotated the pen, it's hard to say. All in all, I think that test was a success. Of course, one other important test with uh, fountain pens for me. Yeah, that slips right in there. But if you may have noticed, the clip looks like it's a little bent, like somebody may have forced it to do that at some point. But slipped into the pocket with no trouble. So what do I think? Very nice pen. Nice daily writer type of pen. And it's Hungarian, so how cool is that? And speaking of Hungarian, I've got a little piece of Hungarian history here, so let's turn back to this camera. So what I have for you is a book. Let's zoom out. Sweet, oops, wrong way. So you can actually see the book. In fact, I feel like I should take a picture of that. Include that, what the heck, on the thread. So this is a book about Hungarian refugees. Uh, 12 days that shook the world, according to this, in the uh, Hungarian refu uh, Hungarian rev Holy buckets, the Hungarian Revolu Revolution. i am doing too many videos this week. So 1956, and what it says here in the back, on October 23rd, 1956, Hungary erupted in blood and flames. Children with pieces of pipe and handmade grenades fought against tanks. Students and housewives seized police headquarters and arsenals. For a few delirious days, the Hungarians tasted the heady wine of freedom. Uh, and then at James A. Mishner. Oh, do you know that name? He's famous for his super long uh, cinder block sized books. Personally helped many to escape after the Battle of Budapest and interviewed hundreds more in the blazing white heat of one of history's great moments. Here is the thrilling story of Hungary's revolution told through the eyes of the people who made it, written with impassioned eloquence by a truly great writer. And it's a I won't say it's an easy read. I mean, this is a, a difficult topic. People forced out of their homes. But, uh, you know, as it says here at the beginning, nobody had ever heard of the little Austrian town of Andau before thousands of young Hungarians reached it across a rickety little footbridge. They had fought the Russians and survived. Uh, James Mishner had seen other refugees on Pacific Islands and in Korea. But he had never witnessed anything like this. Here were no old folks plodding dully away from disaster, but young people, often very young. The flower of one of the most heroic nations in old Europe with the glory of their hearts for what they had managed to do. Out of the sweet and bitter crusade with its incredible courage and equally unfathomable heartbreak, Mishner has made his book a sob in his throat and surges passion, passion bidding his pulse beat quickly. Standing by the bridge at Andau, he has bared a section of his own soul. From the New York Herald Tribune Book Review. So, uh, just quite an interesting book. I feel like I should reread it. And originally published in 1957. Of course, this is a obviously a newer edition. But I bring that up because these were refugees coming across the border into Austria from Hungary, escaping oppression, escaping war, escaping violence. 
um, refugees from Hungary. And I will try not to be too editorial, but just bringing this up is pretty editorial. But, uh, you know, this is a, refugees are not a new phenomenon. People always want to escape these nightmare scenarios and go to a better place. And, uh, you know, the real question is, how do you respond to that? How did Europe respond to these Hungarian refugees? So I would encourage you to read about the Hungarian Revolu Revolution in 1956. It didn't last very long. The Soviets just went and squished it. But what a brave fight. And it gives you hope for humanity that against all odds, they fought. Uh, it took many decades longer, but they got out from under the thumb of the Soviets. Uh, we, we could debate the current situation in Hungary. We could debate about how Hungary has handled refugees crossing into its country. Uh, we, we could debate about the government of Hungary. And those are all interesting topics of conversation. But, uh, I don't know, just something about a vin vintage pens just excite me. Because, first of all, you have the personal history. Who owned this Pevdi? Why did they save the box? And I know it's not brand new because all the flippin' blue ink I cleaned out of it. Uh, so it's been used before. How did it get a Parker converter in it? So many stories I want answers to. Just on the personal, that pen level that I'll probably never get an answer to. But on the other extreme, the history of Hungary. Here's a representation of, well, a little bit after 1956, I would believe. Uh, just based on the pen it's modeled after. So, you see, clones aren't a new thing. I did a video a few weeks ago, ago about the Chinese clones of the Parker 51. Not just the Chinese. There are all kinds of countries and manufacturers that do it. So, I hope that was interesting. I hope you enjoyed my little dive into history and perhaps enjoy a a small book recommendation. It definitely has some interesting personal stories in it. Uh, that James A. Mishner recorded. And it's not as long as his typical book. So it might be worth picking up at your local library or a bookstore. And on that note, slight editorial comment now. Um, I tried really hard not to recommend Amazon as a bookseller. I wanted something neutral. And I thought I'd found it with Goodreads, and I could just put a link to a Goodreads link. Oh, whoops, discovered that Amazon owns Goodreads. So, um, just to get away from the big behemoth of book selling, I put a Barnes & Noble link on it, but uh, if you know of uh, a website I could go to to recommend books, something like an IMDB that isn't necessarily tied to a particular platform, although I think IMDB might be related to Amazon somehow, Ugh. but... You know, something neutral to recommend books from time to time, I would really appreciate it. So, uh, if you have any comments about this Pevdi, maybe you know the model, maybe you know more about Pevdi. I haven't really begun my research into Pevdi, but I will. Uh, let us know down in the comments. So, I uh, want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.